Jesus Christ, really? Don't forget to become a member of Unrelent Gaming's Patreon for exclusive manga content and early access. Isn't that right, Seth? I already joined his Patreon today. Tons of great stuff on there, actually. But did you really have to blow up the city? Mm, yes. You blew up the domino. You blew up the domino and you're laughing. Do you realize the f***ing crisis here? And you will be next. Unless you subscribe, like the video, and turn on notifications right now. Or else what? You'll aggressively scream another man's name for several hours? Kakarot! Kakarot! Well, as critical as things are here in Universe 7, we continue to observe the intense battle that is being waged in Universe 14 involving both the God of Destruction, Cobras, and Vegeta. And with Vegeta embroiled in this fierce contest, he must continue to exercise extreme caution. Cobras is not merely a formidable opponent in terms of raw power, his real threat lies in his cunning and deceptive nature. Vegeta must remain vigilant, for Cobras is known to weave a web of lies and deceit that could ensnare even the most astute warrior. His his skill set extends beyond physical destruction, making him one of the most lethal gods of destruction known across the universes. And if Vegeta isn't careful, then he very well may become a victim to Lord Cobras's lethal and deadly tactics. As our story now continues back within Universe 14, as the God of Destruction Cobras now looks to continue his battle against Ultra Ego Vegeta, as with Cobras seemingly enough looking as though he is hiding something up his sleeve, it was only just as Cobras was shown having to crack his neck, where Cobras then went on to respond, and I must admit and say that I haven't had a good fight like this, especially against another mortal in tens of millions of years, mortal, so you should consider this an honor to have went this far against me, however, though, Vegeta. You will not be going any further in this battle against me, especially once you start to see how serious I can truly be. And given your rather poor choice to refuse my offer, Cobras continues, I want you to come and prove to me on just how much you've learned from Beerus, along with showing me on just how skilled you truly are, mortal. For if you think you know on how the power of destruction works, well, I have some bad news for you then, and it's not going to be pretty either, Vegeta. You should have taken up my offer when you had the chance because now you'll have to learn the hard way, so come forward and fight. As by no means was Ultra Ego Vegeta willing to back down from this because upon Ultra Ego Vegeta then shown having to make his move was when Vegeta then quickly went on to shout, How dare you go and try and mock me, Destroyer, for I am not your entertainment, you hear me? For my destructive powers are by no means below yours if I am able to rival those who already wield the same essence as you do. You and I are not the same, and therefore could never be compared, Cobras went on to then quickly respond, as you will start to slowly see that you were never even remotely close on being anywhere near my level to begin with, Vegeta. In which from out of nowhere, the very second Cobras was shown having to spit something out of his mouth in landing on Vegeta's glove was when Vegeta then went on to respond, Oh, just what in the world is he doing? Doing. How dare that annoying god of destruction go and spit in my face like this! Wait, this isn't spit. It feels so much heavier on my arm than what spit would feel like. So, this isn't saliva, and it's burning right through my glove. I knew it. It's venom! That bastard is trying to blindside me with his poison! How dare he try to take me for a fool and attempt to pull this stunt on me! Grow curse! 
him. Vegeta went on to shop by quickly removing his glove. And now that I know I will not be falling victim to such a cheap tactic, Vegeta went on to then shout. Now just wait until I am able to grab hold of that damn god of destruction. But it looked as though even despite with Vegeta having to understand this, that Cobras had other intentions as Cobras then went on to respond. How incredibly foolish for him to let his guard down by not keeping his eyes on where they rightfully belong. To which from out of nowhere now, before Vegeta even had the opportunity to register as to what had just happened, was when Universe 14's God of Destruction Cobras was from that point then shown having to make his move in punching Vegeta on down as Cobras then went on to continue. Face it, mortal, you will not be able to continue this resistance against me and deep down, you know you can't, Saiyan. So now yield to the darkness that dwells within your very soul, Vegeta. Let this universe be the throne of your true power for if you choose to continue to defy this destiny, then I will inflict upon you a torment so severe that it will relentlessly wear down your spirit until you crumble beneath the weight of your own failures. To which even despite with Cobras being shown going right back on the attack with Vegeta barely shown having to avoid it was when Cobras then went on to continue. Why do you continue to still serve a god of destruction who isn't even willing to help you refine your true destructive nature, Vegeta? Fighting me is pointless when you already know the truth, with Ultra Ego Vegeta responding, Well, it may seem pointless to you, but it otherwise means something much more to me. And I could never expect for someone like you, a destroyer by nature and a god who cares so little about his own mortals, to possibly understand the pride that I take in representing my universe, Cobras. And I could never trade that in for anything, Vegeta continues. And although Lord Beerus may at times be stubborn, he is still by and large a far more honorable destroyer than you will ever be, with Cobras responding, Bro, what did you just say to me, Saiyan? How dare you? But then, it was only upon the moment of contact with Vegeta being shown having to smash his way into Cobras as the two went rolling down on the ground was when Vegeta then went on to continue, You heard exactly what it is that I just said, Destroyer, and just like I had mentioned earlier, I'd rather die than lay down my honor and pride in exchange for more power. So once again, I decline, Destroyer. Interesting, Angel Merlith went on to chime in from a distance by responding, for it would seem as though Lord Cobras' mind games are slowly doing the trick. And very soon, if Vegeta continues to resist and attempts to put up a fight against Lord Cobras, will he only then feel the fury of what an angry god of destruction is truly made of when forced to implement deadly techniques? And it's quite sad, for Vegeta should have listened to Lord Cobras, even if he was bluffing on his offer, for the punishment now will only start to get worse from here on, I'm afraid. In which with Cobras now shown having to gain the upper hand, and from that point then shown having to mount Vegeta down onto the ground before attacking him, was when Cobras then went on to continue, Do you want to know on why the other gods of destruction regard me as being one of the most dangerous destroyers among them? It's because I embody what they all lack, Cobras continues continues, the absence of empathy. An empty void where remorse should reside and an unyielding resolve free of regret and foolish emotions. Whereas those who show mercy like Beerus, I, on the other hand, do not say in. My existence is destruction in its purest form, and that is why I am so deeply feared. My actions as a god of destruction are unclouded by these foolish emotions driven solely by the purpose of annihilation, Saiyan. For this clear and unfaltering resolve is why I am the most feared among my peers, Cobras continues. So that is why we are different. That is why you could never be compared to me. And even with Beerus teaching you about how to wield the power of a destroyer, you are still but a beginner, Vegeta. As you could become so much more here than you ever could have under Beerus' tutelage. As the more you continue to resist, the more I am able to see right through your shallow pride. To which the very moment Cobras was shown having to attempt to strike Vegeta with Vegeta quickly shown having to teleport out of the way was when Cobras then went on to continue. Oh, stubborn little pest. Now where did you? But then, it was just from out of nowhere now from behind Cobras where Vegeta had now gone as far as to kick Cobras directly in the neck as Vegeta then went on to respond. You could never understand the meaning behind what it means to have true pride.
Jedi Destroyer, for it is far more than just a mere badge of honor to me. It is a testament of my unyielding warrior spirit, something that you destroyers would never know anything about. You know nothing of my history, Cobras. For now I see on why you brought me here, for your plan was to try and turn me against my own universe and side with yours so that way you can use me to do your dirty work for you, am I right? Well, maybe if this was back in the day, then maybe I'd consider it, but I could never allow myself to ever be a victim of someone else's control ever again. That bridge was burned a very long time ago, Destroyer. Oh, and there it is, Angel Merlith went on to chime back in. So Lord Cobras' plan had proven to be successful after all, and the Saiyan didn't even see it coming. In which, despite this, with Cobras now being shown getting blasted by Ultra Eagle Vegeta over and over and over again was when Cobras then went on to chime back in. And so it unfolds. The cracks in the mighty Saiyan shield are now starting to show. And most of all, the opening that I've been waiting for. And with his focus now swayed in moving from a destructive mindset to more of an emotional and prideful one, your weakness has been exposed. Yes, and with your mind not focused on where it's supposed to be in order for destruction to fully be used properly, let's play a game of prey and find out which one of us is truly the hunter and which one of us is the hopeless prey. So in the end, you have either overplayed your hand, Vegeta went on to shot by firing off a blast, or there truly wasn't that big of a gap in our power to begin with, God of Destruction. To which as soon as Vegeta's blast was from that point then shown having to make contact and creating a massive explosion in the distance was when Angel Merlith went on to chime back in. Oh, and there lies the fatal flaw in the Saiyan's approach. The blinding need to assert dominance and to prove his superiority and in your quest to demonstrate your might, you lose sight of the ultimate goal. So how ironic that your greatest strength has now turned into your greatest weakness. Well, I guess Lord Beerus didn't truly care enough to spend more time in training you after all, Merlith continues. The relentless pursuit of boasting your pride has blinded you to the true nature of where you are and whom you're going up against, for Lord Cobras is now fully aware of this colossal misalignment. Something's not right despite me keeping my eyes locked on him the entire time, Vegeta went on to then say to himself by patiently waiting, and even though I watched him take my attacks head on, why does it now feel as though there is a sudden change all around me, Vegeta questions, as though the air itself feels heavy, something's wrong. In which moments later with the dust then beginning to settle on down and Vegeta now noticing that Cobras was nowhere to be found was when Vegeta then went on to respond, what? He's completely gone. But how? He couldn't have been vaporized from an attack like that. Wait, there's a hole right beneath where he was just standing. Which ultimately means that if he wasn't destroyed by my attack, nor was he able to move out of the way, then he's likely underground. Girl, but where? I can't sense any vibrations coming from beneath the surface and so, if I can't feel him burrowing underground, then why is there a hole where he once stood? He's plotting something and he must be plotting underground. Oh, this is just ridiculous. Everything feels so different now. But I've got to hurry and go find him before he ends up finding me. As Angel Merlith went on to chime in, you know, I wouldn't linger around so openly on the battlefield like that if I were you, Vegeta. Lingering around like this is almost like holding an open invitation for disaster to strike. Lord Cobras is a master of deception, Merlith continues, capable of turning the very ground that you walk on into a trap, mortal, with Vegeta having to respond, Enough with these games, Angel! Now tell me where he is right now! I know that you know exactly as to where he is and what he's planning and so now cough it out! With Angel Merlith responding, Well, hi, Vegeta! Very cheeky of you to assume that I'd know as to exactly what Lord Cobras was planning, but... Well, you're right, because I do know as to where he is, in fact. But why would I ever want to go and tell you about it, Merlith questions? Well, you're smart enough to go and figure it out all on your own, and you better move quickly, because I can already sense Lord Cobras on the move, to which as Vegeta was then shown leaping up towards the sky was when Vegeta then went on to respond, Oh, then if those are the games that we're going to be playing, then I might as well just go and tear this entire planet apart if it means finding him. So one way or 
another, either I'll force him out of hiding or I'll just go and blast him out for it makes no difference to me. And so now come on out and quit playing these mind games with me, Cobras. Oh, fine. So that's how you want to play this then, huh? Then how about we play then? So this one's on you. In which upon Vegeta now shown having to rain down a storm of energy blast by shooting all around the landscape was when Vegeta then went on to shout, now come on out or I'll go and destroy this entire planet. Well, Vegeta's already doing exactly as Lord Cobras had wanted, Merlith went on to then say to herself, and is completely unaware of what lies in store for him, and especially with his mindset now shifting on protecting his pride more than destroying. But then, it was only just as Vegeta was continuously shown firing multiple energy blasts down onto the ground, where it now looked as though seemingly enough Cobras was beginning to approach Vegeta from behind, or at least that was what Vegeta had presumed for this to be, as Vegeta then went on to continue. Oh, damn it all! Where is he? Wait a second. I can feel him. Yes, but of course, there! Now you've done it! Big mistake, Destroyer! Now you're mine! What the? What? And just who was that? That wasn't Cobras. Oh, there's more of these things out here, Vegeta continues. This is starting to get very annoying because now there could be more of them hiding all around me while their miserable god of destruction waits for me somewhere in hiding. Oh, damn that coward. To which all of a sudden now from beneath the ground, we from that point then see how a little Hakai ball was then shown having to make its way upwards as Angel Merlith went on to chime back in. Your threats honestly mean nothing to Lord Cobras, Vegeta. Now remember, for as it is above, then so it shall be below. To which, as Vegeta was now beginning to oversee dozens of little Hakai balls all around the landscape, was when Vegeta then went on to respond, What the heck? Are, are those energy orbs of destruction? And I would take great caution if I were you, Vegeta. For Lord Cobras doesn't intend for you to make it out of this unscathed. With Vegeta responding, Oh damn, that monster, they're everywhere and all around me. Great, he has me surrounded but I've got to act fast before they come. To which seconds later, with all of these orbs of destruction now seemingly making their way towards Vegeta, with Vegeta shown having to have no room in getting away, was when Vegeta then went on to shout, Oh, there's no time. Well, go on then, Destroyer. I'm not scared of you. Now let's see what you've got. As one by one now, with each of these orbs being shown having to slam right into Vegeta, with Vegeta being shown doing his best to protect himself, was when Vegeta then went on to shout, I won't lose and have this be what destroys me here so I have to fight no matter what it's going to take I am starting to see on why Beerus had grown a liking for you by allowing for you to remain within his good graces Cobras went on to then respond but such things will no longer be the case with me for I was wrong when I had assumed that you'd seek out greater knowledge in wanting to learn more about the ways of destruction, for you were so fixated on boasting your pride towards me that I watched as your mind had shifted from destruction to entitlement, for you are a fool, Vegeta. But now you will have to go and learn the hard way on what happens to those who dare to try and cross me, for you should have accepted my offer with respect and saved yourself the humiliation, Cobras went on to pop up from behind. Now welcome home, Vegeta. As shocking enough now from behind Vegeta as Cobras was from that point then shown sinking his fangs into Vegeta's neck was where it looked as though this was indeed the secret technique that Angel Merlith was referring to as Angel Merlith went on to then chime back in. Ah, and there it is. One of Lord Cobras' signature techniques, his Venom of Destruction and Control. And as the Venom that is now slowly starting to make its way through and around Vegeta's body continues to spread, this poisonous and extremely lethal toxin is the very manifestation of Lord Cobras' God of Destruction power. And even as the strength of Vegeta's character continues to be tested, Lord Cobras' venom seeks to erode his sense of self and replace it with the destructive intent of his new master and God of Destruction, Lord Cobras. To which upon Cobras being shown having to finally release his teeth from Vegeta's flesh as Vegeta was now beginning to change physically was when Cobras went on to chime in, and here you thought that you had me all figured out only to be proven pain fully wrong in the end. The process is irreversible, Vegeta, for the venom in your veins is but a binding contract between us, sealing your fate in now becoming my disciple who shall follow and serve my every command within Universe 14 forever, say 
again, and as it ravages through your once battle-hardened warrior spirit, it will now instill a new purpose onto you with a new allegiance and destroyer to serve under. For you will no longer fight for the sake of your universe, nor will you continue to fight for your god of destruction Beerus, which also includes your ideals, your friends, or your family, Vegeta. For you will only ever now fight for me and only me, your new master and ruling god of destruction, mortal, and soon, very soon, Vegeta, you will awaken to a new destiny reborn under my dominion. For the venom has laid waste to your inner defenses, leaving you completely vulnerable and ready to be reshaped into my image from within. Your thoughts, your actions, and your every purpose will all align with my desires, Cobras continues, for you will be my greatest prize and strongest servant, Vegeta. So you could go and struggle all you'd want, for you'd have to be far stronger than me if you hope to break free from my control over you, mortal, as you are very far from reaching that point. Now do yourself a favor and just accept the outcome of your destiny, alright? For the longer you continue to fight it, the worse that it will ultimately get for you. Yes, that's right. Just let it all sink in, Vegeta. As Vegeta went on to mutter, D Damn you, Cobras! What, what have you done? And so it begins, Vegeta. My venom infused with the essence of destruction has rendered you a puppet to my very will. As the transformation now looks to have finally been completed, my faithful servant, now do you see on why I am so very feared among my own kind Cobra's questions? Do you see the irony, Vegeta? You, a mortal once under Beerus's tutelage, will now become the very instrument of his downfall for not holding up his end of the deal. For it is a fate rich in poetic cruelty. Beerus, who has so often played with the fates of others, will now face the retribution at the hands of his own pupil. For I will be the one to orchestrate this symphony of revenge with you as my most potent warrior. A warrior turned against his former master in a twist of fate most befitting. You were never my equal and you never will be, Saiyan, as I had warned you that this would happen, for this here will always and forever be your fate, beneath a destroyer just as it's always been. Yes, go on and try to continue to fight it, for you'll only be wasting your time by trying, mortal. You are mine now. And with you as Universe 14's top warrior, I will have you train those who I deem worthy in order to grow my universe into wielding the strongest mortals in the multiverse and with me as its mighty and supreme leader. And thus, with both your mind and your body tainted, you are hereby mine to control. And do you want to know why I went and picked you, Vegeta? It was because I saw the monster that once laid within you, a once cold and ruthless killer now reawakened. And as I knew that you weren't as pure as the other two on Beerus' planet, for I was able to see the darkness that you once had sleeping deep within you, and now that it's been brought back out again, you are here by everything that Lord Beerus should have helped you become. For this is what it truly means to fully grasp the power of a god of destruction. This is what you should have been all along, Cobras continues. A cold and ruthless killer, Vegeta, which now the monster has been reborn. And so now rise, my servants, for there is much for us to do, and especially now since you've embraced your destiny. For he was too blind to see, Merlith, but now his eyes have been opened at last, with Angel Merlith responding, Well, as expected, well done there, Lord Cobras. But now I'm rather curious to know that with Vegeta under your watch, what is it that you intend to do next since our mission for 
for the most part is now complete. Do you intend to perhaps go back to Universe 7 and show Lord Beerus the result of what had happened with his students with Cobras responding? But of course, for now we will use our faithful servant to destroy Beerus' kingdom and burn it all down onto the ground is what we will do, though I am rather curious now in seeing as to what Vegeta here is capable of against those other two Saiyans that were on Beerus' planet. Interesting, Merlith chimes in, so should we take this moment to find out then? For this could in fact actually be something that would be worth looking into, and especially if you want to see on how Vegeta here will fare up against the other two Lord Cobras, with Cobras responding, Good idea, for if the other two refuse to obey, then we'll just have Vegeta destroy them for us. So why just stop by taking one when we can go and take them all from Universe 7, Cobras continues, for no longer will Universe 14 be forced to walk in the shadows of any of the others. And now, what say we head back and pay good old Beerus another little visit, just so that we can see the look on his face when he sees what happened to his most honorable protege, as it was only right then and there now during that moment, where the Beyond Dragon Ball Super story of the resurrected Fallen Gods of Destruction, the Universe 14 Saga Manga Chapter Number 6 Special, then comes to a close. Actually, I'll go and take it from here, as I do want to go as far as to address something with all of our dear viewers at the moment. As before I go and give you the following information, if you aren't already a member of Unreal's Patreon community, then you are truly missing out on so much without you even knowing. As not only is the next episode already on the page, but if you want to support all of the content that you see and gain access to tons of exclusives along the way, then we do encourage for you all to become a members of our Patreon community today, for we will link it all down in the description box below and pinned comment section. Now to those who are disheartened by Vegeta's current predicament against Lord Cobras, let me offer a piece of wisdom by offering you a clue for the coming future. Now you see, Lord Cobras possesses a rather unique ability, for his venom is not just physically debilitating but also spiritually corrupting as well. It targets the darkness no matter how minuscule within one's heart, amplifying it to overwhelm the victim's very will. In Vegeta's case, his turbulent past and internal struggles made him particularly susceptible, but I wouldn't rule Vegeta out just yet if I were you, for this entire ordeal is far from finished, and you have no idea on what Unreal has in store for you all very soon. So we hope you all enjoyed as we will see you all on Patreon and in the next video. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Hello. Did you know that you can stay up to date with the latest Dragon Ball content by simply subscribing to Unreal End Gaming? Also, don't forget to follow on these social media platforms, you sexy son of a bitch. Roshi. Silent Cell. Me and the fans are having a moment. That's right. I know what you want. Extra long, thick Dragon Ball content. Quality reviews with flawless editing. Yeah. Yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? You dirty bitch. Roshi, the fuck? God damn it, I need them to subscribe, Cell. And we're demonetized. Yeah, screw it. Let's cut to the video. <laughs>